Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, this webinar when we, we will be looking at uh, the US stock market from a trading and investing perspective. Thank you so much for taking the time out in your day to come and join myself, Anna, and my husband, David, who is sitting next to me as always. But before we start, can I just draw your attention to the disclaimer that I know you can see on your screen? As you know, trading and investing can be a risky business. So please, please don't ever think of using money that you cannot afford to lose. Right. Um, in this uh, webinar, we're actually going to focus on NVIDIA for all sorts of reasons, from technical uh, reasons, uh, fundamental reasons. And we'll go through uh, the webinar because NVIDIA is at a very interesting point on the chart, certainly on the slower timeframes. David will also look at the faster timeframes for the stock to see what's been going on today. I have to say, it's not been the most uh, exciting uh, price action, but it's just one of those uh, uh, one of those days, and just something as traders we uh, we have to. Um, uh, get used to. It, not every day can be a uh, a, a big day, uh, both up, um, either up or down. And you only have to look at the VIX to see that there's uh, that there's really not enough volatility, not enough volatility on the VIX, which is the uh, the, the 30 day, in other words, the uh, the options on the 30 based on 30 days. But we're also going to have a look at the nine day because there are other VIX indices indices that uh, the CBOE, David, have, have come out with to give uh, traders, short-term traders, a better view on volatility because looking 30 days out is uh, can be a little bit uh, too far out if you are only looking to take an intraday trade or certainly not going to stay in a trade longer than a few hours or a few days. Before we start, um, as always, it's going to be uh, the charts are going to be seen through the prism of volume price analysis. Here it is on Amazon.com. Uh, it's always um, great to see, very very humbling uh, to read some of the reviews that we now have on the book. We're up to and oh, where are we this week? We're up to three thousand four hundred and seventy-seven. So we've had a few more since the last time, which was last week. The other bit of news about the book is there's a hard cover version and there is also a color version um, it's not actually on this particular link it has its own uh, url and i'll put the url in the chat box uh, later on in the session it's really come about because traders like to have a um, a, a solid book and the when we published the book it was in black and white Practically 99% of all trading books are in black and white. It's just, it's just the, uh, the, it's just the way things are done. But also, uh, it's a question of cost. Obviously, color printing is more expensive. It has come down a little bit. I have to say, it's not quite as uh, horrendous as it was when we started, and, and come down a little bit in in the last few years. So we thought it was uh, a good time to launch a color version, and uh, it's available if that's something that is of interest to you. And with volume price now. Analysis. What are we looking at? We, for those of you who perhaps are not aware of the methodology, we're looking at that very intimate relationship between the price action and the volume. I did another podcast earlier this uh, this week on Monday, actually, with a, a big futures trader. His name's Anthony Crudeli, who has a, a very nice YouTube uh, channel. And that's what we talked about. We just talked about VPA, what what it can do for you, what are the the, the principles behind it. He uses volume as uh, uh, as well, so he he understands the benefit of it. And it was really just a sort of uh, very sort of relaxed conversation about this methodology. And really, the, there were a number of points that I wanted to uh, put forward. The first is, is here's your foundation. Once you learn to read the chart through understanding this relationship and the price cycle that is then created um, because of this relationship, what does it actually do for you? Because ultimately, that's what traders want to know. And what it does, it, it is very good at anticipating what is likely to happen next. That's all we want to know. That's really one question. We're in the market. We're looking for, and maybe we're, uh, we're looking for a trade. Isn't this a a, a reasonable uh, a time to take a, a a position? And that's what VPA will help you determine. 
it's not foolproof. Nothing is foolproof. But the more you look at charts, the more you will see that what we call the VPA setups or the VPA sort of signals uh, that the methodology throws up is they are repeated time and time again in all time frames. Doesn't matter whether it's a five minute chart or one minute chart or you're looking at a monthly chart, they are there. The difference, obviously, is the time it's going to take for them to, to develop, which is why we're going to focus on the video, because on the on the slower time frames, it is really at a, such a key inflection point. And to be honest, it could go either way. And again, it's all based on the principles of volume price analysis. And David also will uh, have give you his own take and add uh, to what I have said, uh, at, uh, to what I've just said. On top of that, once you have the the the, uh, the understanding of the methodology, the volume and uh, the price action and the volume, we then use support and resistance. We happen to use candles. We look at candles, candle patterns, and of course we look at time. And that time also includes multiple time frames. So that's really a sort of little a thumbnail of volume price analysis. I know many of you who come along to the session already use the methodology, uh, which is great. And, you know, we can never stop learning. I, David and I never stopped learning. Um, this was just the base, if you like, the foundation. And once you, you've gone, you've really got to grips with it, then you can sort of put your own, you can put your own spin on it. You can put your own indicators on it. Anthony is a great fan, for example, of, of Bollinger Bands. Uh, we've used Bollinger Bands in uh, other in other markets. Um, we've got the uh, the VWAP, obviously. We've got our own proprietary indicators. You may have proprietary indicators that you've uh, you know that you've acquired, or you can use some of the indicators that are obviously available on your platform. It is a very very forgiving methodology, but what it does, it if you like, it makes the it. it it almost validates the um, the the indicators as well, as it were, because based on your reading of the chart and based on your understanding of volume of the price action and the volume, what the indicators do is they then are supportive of your analysis, which is really what indicators are there for. And the indicators we've developed, the particular ones we've developed from the perspective of volume price analysis. But that doesn't mean to say that you can't use a moving average with it, a Fibonacci, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what I wanted to say on that. If you've got any questions on anything we, we say, then please just put them into the chat box. It was lovely to, uh, uh, to hear from you. If you've got any comments, again, please just add them into the chat box. Before we go to the charts, as always, I mentioned last week, this is the trading economics calendar. So to get a view of, I've actually got it on this week's, next week's calendar, because I wanted to see when we've got the FOMC, which is which is next week. Really, the markets now, they're all focused on the FOMC, which is the last major uh, news release before we really things start to slow down for the um for the christmas for the holiday period so let's just have a look at this week there we are what are we where are we today today is wednesday i've had a sort of um i had a couple of things to do yesterday so i've not been at my desk for the whole time but the most important one yesterday was this uh release which was the jolts which is the job openings and in fact the number came in lower than expected and and you think well bad number the market actually went up yesterday i think apple really uh put on a um, a bit of a spurt uh, as everyone sort of um, you know wonder, turning their head and say well you know where did that all come from and and it's always this thing about when is when is the why is good news sometimes bad for the market? Why is bad news sometimes good for the market? And it's really a question of understanding what the market narrative is at the moment. And you only have to read the headlines to know that is essentially when is the Fed going to start cutting interest rates? I mean, it paused. The consensus is it's going to pause again, and the consensus now is that the, the the cuts are coming much sooner than the market was pricing in um, certainly a couple of months ago. And they do that. You have you can go over to the CME and look at something called the the Fed Watch tool, and that gives you the kind of percentage of uh, of, the, of market participants that think you know, what is the rate going to be 
uh, looking ahead. With regard to employment, employment is the last element that the that the um, the Fed have been looking at. The employment market has been strong, in inverted commas, and I have to say in inverted commas because we are we have NFP this Friday as well. And if you follow the NFP, which I suggest you do, because the narrative is at the moment is interest rates, but interest rates are high because of inflation. And uh, one of the uh, sections of the economy that can drive inflation is obviously people uh, asking for higher wages. And what the Fed has to do, it has to balance uh, its mandate about employment without driving the economy into a recession. So it is this balancing act. So far, the the employment market seems to be strong. But I have to say in inverted commas because each number, I think, in the last few months that has come out has then subsequently been revised lower. And whilst employment is a very lagging indicator, there is this feeling that, you know, the, the, the headline numbers look fantastic, but when they're revised, they are actually revised lower. And you say, well, that's really bad for, uh, that is bad in inverted commas for the economy. Yes, it is, of course, and very bad for people who lose their jobs or, or don't have a job. But what it does in terms of what's it going to do with interest rates, it means the Fed has has actually over tightened. It's, it's just raised interest rates too much and it's got to take its foot uh, take its foot off the uh, off the gas as, as as it were ease up falling interest rates or a cut in interest rates um, or certainly a, a prolonged pause in interest rates gives the market a breathing space certainly cuts will be um, will be initially positive for stocks a full blown recession is not in anybody's interest so as I said it's always going back to this balancing act which is why the jolts came in. Uh, the new job opening is lower than expected. The market was it, it took it as good news. So as a bad news in terms of the release, but good news in terms of what the uh, you know what the market thinks is is going to uh, is going to happen. And at the same time, we also have to keep a very close eye on the bond market, particularly at, well across all the all the durations. And I I, I looked on on the charts and I looked to see what the um, uh, what the yield is on the 10-year, which is actually at 4.1. It's very, very close to falling below 4%. But if you look at the short term, if you look at the two-year, it's at 4.59. There are a lot, there's a lot of bonds coming in at the short end of the uh, of the curve. And I'm talking the 30-day, the, the, the one month, the, the three months. And there's been a, a stampede into, into those because some of them are actually paying over five percent, and in fact, we've got here. Yesterday, we had a forty-two bill auction, and it pays five point two eight five. So that's also taking money away from risk assets. If if you had if you had money, and the U.S. Treasury is now going to pay you for for forty for a forty-two day bill five point two eight, would you would you take it or not? If inflation is in fact already falling towards the, you know the, the fed target of two percent of course you would this is you'd be mad not to well that obviously money's money is always looking for a return and it's looking for a return as a return and also looks at the risk that's involved in that return and regardless of that the us has had a slight downgrade because of its debt and china's had a downgrade as well the us treasuries are still the gold standard as it were so why would you not take 5.225 uh, 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 um ignore the eu obviously that's that's that one i don't know quite how they uh, got in there uh, today but they shouldn't have done we've also had um, uh, we've got oil the oil price has, uh, I wouldn't say it's collapsed, but it's a lot, lot, it, it's its low in terms of um, what it has been. Also for producers, well, this is why OPEC is in such a, uh, is, is having a lot of squabbles in, in OPEC because the oil producers all have what's called a break even. And when the oil price falls below that break even, they've got problems. I think for, if you take the Saudis as the benchmark, their break even is something like $85 a barrel. Well, it's certainly not $85 a barrel. But for consumers at the moment, it's, it's, it's great because you have lower 
uh, 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 lower uh, prices at the pumps. That also feeds into the in inflation, i.e., um, it it's, it lowers it. It's going to lower it for the for the end user. That also feeds into the narrative concerning uh, the interest rate cuts. So as you see, you have a sort of set of dominoes, and once they start to fall, that is the narrative at the moment, which is why um, inflation data with the and interest rates and um, certainly what the oil price is doing at the moment are all they all make they're all part of the story at the moment and that's why we have to be aware of what's going on as well and tomorrow we've got more we've got the initial jobs claims and then we've got the nfp and what i've done here in case you weren't with us last week is the great thing about um econ uh, trading economics is you can uh, click down on this uh, on on this menu here and you can highlight th those releases which are moving the market at the moment i mean gdp growth yeah it is fine but at the moment it's really uh, interest rates and inflation and so what i've got is i've got the inflation calendar for the next uh, week or so so you know in advance what is this when's when the cpi is coming up when is the ppi when is the pc pce and interest rates obviously it's all to do with the fed and we can see here it's wednesday december the 13th after which to be honest it's there are trades to be had they're mainly sort of they're technical uh it's it, it's almost a traders market actually because all the all the um every, everything's closing down for the holidays so there we are david is there anything you want to add to that before no. i we look at the charts but i'm sure david's got other things to um, other bits and pieces he wants to say as well nvidia what do we do about nvidia that, i don't know <laughs> when we think of nvidia we think of that song by Groucho marx called lydia remember the tattooed lady go on to youtube and see if you can find the song by groucho marx it's very funny okay nvidia a couple of things first we haven't uh, mentioned them for some time one of them is bar chart and one of them is finviz which i'm not sure is here but i've got it up somewhere these are the two uh, stock screeners that we actually feature very heavily in our stock trading and investing pro uh, program and the reason for highlighting them now is when we're going to look at a um at a stock an individual stock it's really nice to get a sort of a broader background not so much on, on we're not going to focus too much on the fundamentals we'll look at them a little bit but much more to get a feel for what is average volume for a particular stock we in the program we're actually going to look at at volume in a number of different ways one of them is obviously trading volume that we see on the chart but another way is we look at the average volume because if you are trading uh, the, uh, the stock or even if you're looking at it on a slower time frame it's good to, to know what is considered average because if if below average volume is, is is coming in that is also highlighting something and when you look at it in conjunction with the price action and the candle that's also going to tell you uh you know, give you another perspective if you like on what is likely to happen next the other thing is is just a very quick overview is to have a look at the put call ratio it is it is a very broad brush look at what the sentiment towards the stock is in the options market and at the moment anything below one it's uh, 0.57 it means the sentiment is very bullish we don't know the you know what strike prices they are uh where is it short-term options long term we don't know it is just a very broad brush but it gives you a sense of what the market the options market is thinking about this particular stock what is its views and in fact one of the um one of the things we say in the program very strongly is even if you don't trade options and you're not interested in the options market unfortunately you are going to have to pay attention to it because it's almost almost got to the point where it is the tail wagging the dog it was certainly not when david and i started but the options market especially with um zero dated uh, uh, the daily ex expirations on options particularly on stock popular stocks such as nvidia tesla the magnificent seven let's call them the spy the Qs. it's the options market drives a lot of 
the price action. So you really have to be uh, up, be aware of what is uh, you know, what is going on in the options market. That finally this week. It's something that perhaps you may or may not be aware of, but the NASDAQ 100 rebalances every week, every year in December. And the announcements are going to be made on the 8th of December. And then all the, all the flows, all these, the, the, um, what happens is when a stock is nominated to go into an index, then all the ETFs and the, and the mutual funds, they then have to go and buy that stock they have to get rid of the ones that are not in the index anymore and they will actually have to go and buy that stock and that can actually cause that can cause volatility can't it david you can get volatility you can get if uh, those extra flows are coming in you it, it's just something as i said that happens uh once a year and this is a very good site it's called uh public it's called all public.ortex.com and that's what it um that it, it says um, Yes, and sometimes it's 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 actually the inverse of what you would expect. It gives this is very good actually because it gives you what the what they think the uh, who they are going to be. It gives you a view of the kind of numbers in terms of the the uh, the buys of these of these stock, and it also the weightings are going to have to be changed. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure it's going to affect our magnificent seven. Although my magnificent seven is magnificent seven plus one, uh, which I've I've actually added Netflix to it. It. There's never any huge shock as to who's going to be kicked out and who's got to come in. Certainly, my, I don't ever remember, but it's just something to be aware of um, ahead, certainly in the week ahead. And this is so the changes are announced on the 8th and the implementation is closed on the 15th, which I think, according to my calendar that I have here, is actually um, it's the it's, it coincides with option expiration. So, oh, goody, that should be fun that day um, in on the market. And that's after the, of course, that's, and if you think about it, 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 put it into the timeline with the releases, it's two days after the Fed. So it's going to be quite, you know, quite, quite lively those few days. The, you'll also read that, you know, Santa's rally is, is underway, although strictly speaking, Santa's rally is, is more the Christmas and, and into the new year. And the the last interest rate decision of the year by the Fed has always been most the market has taken as the consensus is, well, they're not going to do anything. They're going to pause if they do something, um, if they come out and actually I don't know what they say in terms of in their press release or actually do anything with the interest rate. Well, that's really going to have a massive, massive impact. But the Fed have been known to um, to upend the market in December. I think it was about two or three years ago. Uh, so it's not all it's not all smoothness and light, but it's something, as I said, to be aware of for this week and next week as well and that's pretty much you're pretty much done for the rest of the year as i said there might be some opportunities on a on a daily basis um, um but more sort of what we call technical trading uh, we'll just have to look at the charts before i go on to the charts can i just pass over to you david uh, okay. quickly and then we'll come and back and have a look at my tra i'm going to be using trading view i'll just bring it up quickly here we are that's it. I've got um, this is my index, which I'll start with and then I'll go over to uh, NVIDIA and then pass back to David. I'll just pass back to David now. Anna says I can say hello because I'm going to say hello. Hi, everybody. Good to see you and a uh, warm welcome from me. I'll pass back to Anna in a moment just while she sorts things out. Let's move the chat box down there out of the way. Um, I've got uh, two or three workspaces set up for uh, focusing on NVIDIA. Uh, this one is on the left hand side. We've got the market strength indicator. These are all faster time frames, so we're very much intra intra intraday trading here. Uh, so I've got the uh, five minute time frame on the market strength indicator. And on there, I've got the four indices I've got the YM, the ES, the NQ, and the Russell. So we've got a perspective on what is going on there. And so that's five minute. And then over here, we've got the one, three and five minute. And we've got the one, three and five minute. And the reason I've got them set up um, mirroring one another is just simply to break out the indicators a little bit too, because you're looking at many different things. You're looking at support and resistance. You're looking at uh, congestion. You're looking at volumes. You're looking at uh, volume relative strength, all these sorts of things. So 
it's trying to just break it down into very simple workspaces. And I've just got two here. I've got the accumulation distribution on the top here. So it just makes it very clear where you're getting strong levels, where you've got uh, less strength. So up here, we have this very, very strong level at uh, 465 on the three minute time frame makes it very clear how strong that level is and if you're not familiar with the indicator then it's very very simple and it's very um, intuitive because the thicker the line then the stronger is that region of either support and resistance and that's the way the indicator works this one up here was minor because it's only two but then you don't need to know what that value is simply by looking at it you can tell it's very minor and these levels down here this is 10 this is six this is seven these are all major areas which you're looking at from, as I say, either perspective of support or resistance, depending on which direction it's coming from. So on the top, I've got the accumulation distribution indicator. And then on the one below, I've got the uh, the VPOC, which is over here. The purple line there, we were in a lot of congestion here about an uh, hour or so ago. And now the stock is breaking down. We've broken away. And not only does the VPOC tell us about uh, congestion zones and the the uh, the fulcrum of the market, which is where we were at this point between what about half past four and, and up to about six o'clock just before we started. Really, uh, we were oscillating around this VPOC, which was the purple dashed line, which is our volume point of control because it's the heaviest concentration of volume. And then as we break away, you can see, particularly here where we had a, a low volume area, how quickly the price action has moved through there. And that's the sort of information that is just invaluable to you when you're trading. You're looking at this and it's all about patience, whether we're trading from a VPOC, whether we've got a congestion phase somewhere else, we're, we're forming ceilings and floors of, of resistance and support. And we then have to be patient and wait for the break. And when that break comes, depending on what trigger we use, whether we're going through a floor, through a ceiling, perhaps we're looking for a certain distance. If you've got something like this where you've got a low volume node, and the price is approaching it, it should give you a lot of confidence because what it's telling you is that the chances are the price will move through there pretty swiftly. And that's just a fantastic confidence builder to hold a position and not get spooked out of the market by minor reversals and all the rest of it. So we've had this nice little downtrend. And of course, all the time we are looking at volume confirmation. We are looking at the volume from the perspective of the market makers because that's what vpa is premised on it is when you boil it down into the core principles the essentials of it it is very very simple we are looking to follow the market makers and that's premised on the belief that the market makers sit at the center of the market and therefore they can see both sides of the market they see both supply and demand and therefore they are in a unique and privileged position in which they are able to move the market and see the balance of supply and demand. What they cannot cover up is volume. And that's what we do. We follow them because, as I say, it's premised on the belief that they know what they're going to do next. They see both sides of the market. Therefore, does it not make sense for us to follow what they're doing? Well, the answer is yes. Therefore, a buying climax is at the bottom because it's viewed from the, from the perspective of the market makers buying the retail uh, traders are selling, but the market makers are buying. That's why it's called a buying climax. A selling climax happens at the top because it's the market makers selling to the retail traders who are buying. But from our perspective, it's the inverse. It's a selling climax because we follow the market makers. And that's really all it's premised on. So we are looking for confirmation or anomaly. Is volume and price in agreement or is it in disagreement? And that's really encapsulated in, in 30 seconds at an elevator pitch, if you like, what VPA is all about. It really doesn't cover very much else because all we're looking for is confirmation. Is something in agreement or is there an anomaly? In other words, is in disagreement. So when you look at that last down candle, you look at the volume associated with it, the red, red bar here. Is it in agreement? Yes, broadly speaking, it is. That's what we would expect to see. We've got a widespread candle and we've got decent volume under it. So we know that that is a genuine piece of price action. There's no trickery involved. There's no manipulation. And there is no buying, uh, more importantly, that we see in the context of market maker buying at the moment. And that is true of all these candles down here, all these wide, widespread down candles. They're all associated with. 
So we know that this move is genuine. We've come to the edge of the volume point of control here on low volume. And what, if, what often you see at the edge of the VPOC, at the very edges as we are here, you'll often see minor reversals. So what you then have to do is obviously scroll up to a slower time frame and just see what is going on to, to bring, uh, to broaden out the picture, if you will. So that's why I split the screen. You can see what's going on over here because obviously what we're interested in is what's going on in terms of the indices. They're starting to, we've had this lovely move, which started way, way back here, very, very overbought. The market strength indicator is very much like the currency strength indicator. You can look at indices, stocks, ETFs, commodities, whatever it is you wish to look at. And we look at them from the perspective of overbought and oversold, very much oversold up at the top here. Now, sorry, overbought up at the top here, very much oversold down here and now starting to, to maybe reverse a little bit. And if we're trading a stock to the short side, which we would be on the video at the moment, that is certainly something we want to know. I've got that similar sort of thing set up over here. This is on this is the market strength indicator on two, uh, five and ten. And, I, and and again, you can see it now you've actually got it on the indicator itself. So NVIDIA is the purple line and the other lines here are the four main indices. Very quickly before I hand back to Anna, uh, just to whiz over onto the other uh, workspace I've got here. I've got the VWAP here, uh, which is another of the new indicators and a better return. The other advantage is, is when things are doing, you know, maybe not so, not so fantastic, um, they will hold, they, they will keep the, the index uh, buoyant, as it were. And that's kind of what's been happening at the moment. Obviously, these eight are in the sectors that are also the biggest sectors in the index. And the, those sectors are the tech sector what's called the communication sector and uh, the cyclical of the consumer discretionary for example tesla and amazon i mean consumer discretionary so these eight stocks they are they carry the biggest weight they carry the biggest weight in the sectors that make up the the index so you can see everything is linked together and it really helps to have them what their performance is we've got David has shown you the market strength indicator that you can see that we've developed. You can actually put them all on this uh, a proprietary indicator and you can monitor their their individual performances. I haven't got the market strength indicator up on uh, my TradingView platform, but I, it is available for uh, for TradingView. I just haven't got around to doing it. But I thought it would be fun to create an index at the same time because obviously they they carry the biggest weight. But some days Tesla could have a bad day and Apple could have a, a really good day. But it's just a way of monitoring what this index is doing. And we read it in exactly the same way as a stock. And what we look at it is we look at the patterns. What are we seeing? Is it moving sideways? Are we seeing some strong, Are they, is everything in a good trend? Is it coming to um, an all-time high? It kind of, you know, it just gives us another perspective on what is going on. Uh, in the market and also particularly as we're going to look at NVIDIA and obviously NVIDIA is part of uh, the magnificent seven plus one. A very quick look at the queues, obviously the NASDAQ and here we have, I've actually got the weekly chart and what's interesting about the weekly chart. Now, the thing I would say about this candle here and volume underneath it, this is Thanksgiving. And the one thing about volume that you must always remember when you look at the volume histogram at the bottom of the chart is you must always allow for the seasonality and seasonality includes the holidays. The market was closed for a whole day and a half. so. Is it any wonder that that volume is, is is very low? But what's interesting is if we just look at the price action, we can see this nice big up candle. Then the candle gets smaller. Volume actually uh, falls a little bit. Then it gets smaller again. And of course, it's a very compressed candle. But it's also because of the of the holiday. But nevertheless, there is a kind of pattern to it. So maybe it's coming to a point. It's kind of point of exhaustion. And certainly last week, what have we got? We have not a lot of volume. And we have a kind of is it a doji candle. We've had a little bit of a reversal. Everything seems a little bit tired. Um, 
you know, everyone's waiting for the, as I said, for the for this year to end. There's been some tremendous um, uh, performances by individual stocks. I mean, just to give you uh, an idea that um, uh, Nvidia we're going to look at that's done 220 percent. It's been the best performer in the S&P 500. These seven stocks have also uh, attracted massive hedge fund flows. I think they have. They have. Um, I think Goldman Sachs came out and says 13% of their long positions across various hedge funds, they're all in these seven stocks. So you have a very, very concentrated market. It's also very unhealthy. And you almost feel that something, something is going to happen. But until we get the volatility or we get a trigger event, then this, com this, this compression is going to carry on and it may carry on for some time because this is the weekly chart and we have to be patient and with volume what volume price analysis it also it also helps to helps you is um, it keeps you out of those market situations where a lot of traders or investors investors get it get overtaken by FOMO, the fear of missing out. Prices have been going higher. You hear these incredible returns on a stock such as NVIDIA and you think, oh my goodness, I'm missing out, I'm missing out, I'm missing out. Because one thing we can guarantee is when retail gets involved in a big, big way, that they are the ones that are that pay for it because all these other guys have been in there since the summer and certainly since the beginning of this year. And when we go back and look at the chart for Nivea and NVIDIA, you can see it. And you could say, well, that's all very well. That's hindsight. Yes, it is. But you know, we all look at his historical charts. But what you see on NVIDIA that's already happened, that will happen again in another stock and you can think ah oh, that was the time to get in when everyone when the market when the media and and the market was um, was saying oh no 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 you know stay away from that and what was the what were the insiders doing they they were buying they they, they were pushing it up and and what we're trying to do is to stop you coming in late so basically don't buy when the probability is that it's going to revert and don't sell when it's likely to be turning up. And if you read volume price analysis, the, uh, uh, the complete guide, that will explain it to you in a very, very straightforward way. And I know it works. We use it. And it's not just me. It's the comments that I get on, on my X feed. It's the number of, of uh, trader groups that have now adopted volume price analysis and I said put their own spin on it and use their uh, other indicators and, and what have you and they've they, also taken the name as well huh? <laughs> they've also taken the name yes and they've also taken the name volume price analysis because we came because we came up with it in 2013 which you know uh, imitation is the most sincerest form of, of flattery it didn't exist until 2013 we wanted a way of describing this relationship and we came up with volume price analysis anyway so there we are on the, on those and let's look at nvidia here we are and i've mentioned it before i've written about it i've commented about it i've done posts about it and i keep referring back to it and it is the weekly chart of nvidia and i started i actually wrote about nvidia back in february and what what do you want to look for when a stock is coming to a point where it is possibly going to reverse. Now, Nvidia, a little bit of background. Obviously, it's been a, it's been around some considerable time. It has a very strong market presence in the in in uh, with with. I've got a Nvidia graphics card in in my in my, in my computer. So it is a it's a name that's been around uh, for some time. It's also had a a, a bit of an up and down uh, performance in terms of uh, of, of its stock, but with the hype around AI, it suddenly discovered, and I think this was purely accidental, that one of its chips is what is needed for one particular aspect of AI. And I don't know which one. I don't know whether it's gener gener generative or machine learning, but it's, it's something you can look up yourself. It's found itself in this unique position of having a product that everybody wants. 
no, it doesn't really have any competition at the moment. So it has a tremendous competitive advantage. And those of you who uh, understand, um, have read uh, Warren Buffett's uh, work and the sadly recently departed Charlie Munger, when they look at stocks, when they look at companies, not just stocks, they look at a company, what they want is a company that has a competitive advantage and has enough of, a, of an advantage that even if a competitor appears, it's still being, it can maintain that. And at the moment, that's what NVIDIA, uh, uh, when this whole AI thing uh, came it came about at the beginning of the year. But if we look at the chart, what do we have here? First of all, let's scroll back to October last year. October last year, last year was a terrible year. July was a good was a good month, and uh, very much against the the run of play. July was actually even on the indices. July is almost a, a good month in in all uh, in in all years. It's one of those seasonality factors. But then September came, or, uh, August came, and then September, and down, down, down. And then it got to October. Now, if you were looking at the weekly chart, what you see is you see this increase, this massive increase in volume. And you see these narrow, very, very narrow spreads down here. And those are all anomalies because if that was genuine selling, those candles should be down here. So what do they tell you? This is, if you, rem you have to also remember the context preceding this, uh, this series here. What was the news around that time? I guarantee you it was, um, it was, negative they would it was the inverted yield curve people were already making predictions that 2023 was going to be the year when the when the um recession would hit and it would hit big time so that is the background narrative that's the story what was actually happening on the on the charts of of stocks such as um uh, such as nvidia actually was being accumulated and we know it was accumulated because of this anomaly if we take this candle what have we got under there we've got 352 million of volume and look at it nice you know okay nice big candle there and you you look at that and you look at the one before you've got you've got falling prices and you've got rising volume which is exactly what you want to see you have this little this little break this little up candle here not a huge amount you think okay well that's not going to push it higher because that's only um that's only 216 and you have to remember this is september so people are back at work you know that it's like the, the they're all up back from their holidays and uh, there was labor day that that week i, I do it I, I do accept then you have this series of candles with a lot of volume but they're not going anywhere and then you get this one which is almost the highest volume almost as much as this one tiny little candle happened to have coincided with the the bottom of the of the volume point of control and that was the clue that there was going to and, and and this reversal it was it was exactly on the 13th of october and people saying oh I, I remember reading some of the commentary this is ridiculous what's happening the market the market's turning higher and it did and there was a lot of volume coming in now of course we have this one this was december which is what we expect and then we had another push higher at the beginning of the year, and in fact, I had a, I had some some data coming in that this was where the money was going in. It was going into a tech stock. Tech had also, as a sector, had also suffered quite badly in 2022. And when you look at this, is the other way to look at it. If you don't want to look at individual stocks, look at what the sectors are doing, and you'll often find that the ones that are the most beaten down by the end of the year, are they the ones that are actually going to maybe reverse the following year? So looking at sector performances is, uh, is quite important. And then up it went. And what ha also happened with NVIDIA is if you go and track the the earnings, it really, the, the, the earnings were coming in at spectacular and it pushed it up, past, up and up and up and up and up. And where are we at the moment? Since June, we have the uh, we had the May um, um, uh, earnings, which were you can tell here. You've got injection of volume, but not a huge. You know, maybe it's good, but big candle, but it's a vol volatility candle. But since then, what has actually happened? We've actually gone into this sideways consolidation. 
This candle here is very interesting because it was the August earnings and it actually touched, it went over 500 and it hit the high of 502. In fact, have we, um, we've got subsequently gone 500 and pound. And we've got the shooting star candle with a ton of volume underneath it. And there was a certain amount of, there was reason for that was a certain amount of um, profit taking as it were. But generally speaking, what really caught my eye about this is there's volume going in into this sideways. We've got volatility. We have got some spiky candles. And if you if you understand that the price cycle, uh, the, the VPA price cycle uh, and, and the concepts of VPA, which are based on the work of Richard Wyckoff, you could, are you actually looking at a distribution? Are you at a point where actually at some point this is going to break down? Now, it's the, it's the weekly chart. We are going to be have to be patient. We've had an attempt at a breakout here. We've got uh, 505. We've now got three uh, three down candles. We, I don't know what the volume is going to end up by the end end of this week. But essentially, if this market is and, and I'm talking about the whole market, if we are going to have a reversal, this is where you will see it, and also in Nvidia. Now, does that mean you can't trade it on the faster time frames? No, of course not. But what it also gives you are the levels where the resistance and the support. So the slower time frames can give you a view of the potential that is coming ahead. And it also, when it's in sideways, it will also tell you the kind of price action that you can expect on the faster timeframes. And certainly, this is quite a wide range, 409, 505. That's, that's, a, fairly, you know, that's a fairly wide range. So, but if it, if it were very narrow, then it's, it's going to be an awful lot of chop on the faster timeframes. And it's also where you have to sort of keep an eye on what the, what the fundamentals are for the company because NVIDIA, there's a lot, there are comments out there that it's been doing some, what we call in the UK, some very moody things. Um, David could explain a little bit more about channel stuffing, whether these earnings, they're so spectacular that people are saying, no, is there something actually wrong with them? I, mean, I don't want to say anything that sounds defamatory, and I'm certainly not the only one that's that, that's picked it up. But kind of look, they're kind of looking at the at the accounts and thinking, hmm, you know, yes, they do have this fantastic product, and they have a very solid business anyway. But are they kind of juicing the returns somehow? And also, when you have such big players in there holding this stock really in their interest everyone wants to keep the price higher at some point they may think Do you know what i'm going to bail out take my profit and you know or take some of it and that's the point that possibly retailers start to really pile into it and you can bet your bottom dollar than it that it probably will uh, there'll be a bit of a washout does that mean longer term it has a uh, this you know, it's going to collapse no because ai is one of the it, 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 it's the future along with electric vehicles along with uh, the cloud along with um, anything to do with the internet but as i said before it's a bit like the run up to the dot com um, sometimes markets get a little bit ahead of themselves of new tech new technology and it's a case of this is the first wave, if you like. These are the kind of, you know, the, the video is not a pioneer, but you're going to have pioneers. And it sucks a lot of people in. You know, you get a bit of a bubble and then they think, mm, yeah, OK, let's let's sort that. That's the that's the the, um, the hedge funds and retail who don't read the charts the way VPA traders and investors do. And, and they get um, pulled along. By the hype, and they say, "Oh, great, it's going." I've seen, I've seen a, um, speculation that the stock is going to reach seven hundred. It's a bit like the Bitcoin; it's going to be seven hundred. It may well be seven hundred, but it's got to, it's got to work its way through what looks like a potential distribution. Now, 
if it doesn't turn out to be a distribution, what we then have is we have this platform of support here. This is tremendously strong and that will give it a solid, solid platform. If it doesn't and it, we know what it's got to break through, it's got to break through around uh, 400. And the, 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 the problem is that if it breaks through there, it then goes into what we call this low volume node and the fall will be quite quick because there's no volume to um, uh, to support it. I've often I've also heard that uh, described as, as the fair value area because it's in this it's it's in this big up candle that was pushed up. As, as a, I don't um, I'm still kind of uh, investigating that myself. I, I'm looking at it from a technical perspective, but if the VPA can also help to validate that. that that's great but it's something maybe we'll talk about on an at another session but that is what it's got to is what uh, it's got to hold of the two that is definitely weaker that is definitely strong so it's the kind of piece of price action you could make an argument for both ways both sides the other thing i would i would uh, mention at the moment is we are in the presidential cycle, and as I mentioned on Monday in this podcast, is the third year of the presidential cycle is usually pretty good for stocks. A democratic administration is usually good uh, for stocks. It doesn't mean that there's never been a crash during a democratic presidency. There has, but in the main. But we do have election year coming. So if you like, is it in the interests of uh, the incumbent to have the market trashed or to have the economy trashed. No. So we could simply have to wait um, unless there is some massive trigger. Then, as I said, patience is 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 is, is the norm. And just look at it from a trading perspective, but be aware that it is within these uh, these th this this channel this price action and the other thing to bear in mind this is Wyckoff's second law is the longer any instrument or, or stock or, or market is in this sideways channel when it does break oh boy it is it is going to be you you'll be shocked by the uh, um, uh, by the speed and the distance it will carry because it's like a compressed spring and the spring is 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 released if you have a short congestion then that's the the cause is short, the cause is not very long so the effect is not going to be as great but what I would say to you is this is where we are at the moment but what preceded it and this is what preceded it here so from now on when you look at charts that's how I want you to have a look at them where are we in this cycle yeah and if you've missed it fine you just have to be patient because I said if it doesn't work out then yeah and but and then the next question is well where is it going to go because obviously we don't unlike meta that we looked at last week we don't have an upside target. Meta still has to uh, regain its its all time high. And to be honest, um, you can use whatever measurement that you like. You can use a GAN. Uh, you can use trend lines. Um, I've been playing around with some fibs and some uh, on different time frames and looking at different uh, significant highs and lows on on a, a wider time frame and and a, and, a, and a shorter one. The numbers that keep coming up, you've got 519, you've got 534, you've got 560, and so on and on. And yes, that 700 is, is up there, but it's not going to be for some time. Right, that's all I've got to say about that. Uh, let me have a look. Uh, David will look through the, the the shorter ones. What I've done here, I've got three time frames. I've got the, uh, the five minute, I've got the hour, because on the hour, I like to use, oh, and Camarilla is another one that that, that you can uh, use as as well. I haven't put the Camarilla on the weekly and put the levels, but maybe I'll, I'll put that on uh, next time for another stock. Uh, with the Camarilla levels on the weekly, they are good for a month. So we know what the levels are uh, for, for the month in question, as it were. And they are very, very, they can be very, very accurate. Right. I think, a, did you answer any questions, David? I'll answer the questions, yes. Yeah, there's another one that popped up. Okay, fine. Lovely. All right, then. And the other thing with uh, NVIDIA as well is is keep an eye on what the, you know, if it's doing 
average volume or not. These two weeks, or this week and next week, certainly going to be, tend to, you know, tend to be quite a, a lively, um, you know, there should be fun of uh, flows are going in and out. Uh, finally, just to have a look, where are we? That's it. Um, this is the nine day VIX. And we can see here ticking up slightly. It's actually at a, at a, a level where um, it's reversed off. It goes right back to, I think, 20, uh, 2021. This is over the nine days, but it's it's in single figures. And they always say when the VIX in, the 30 day VIX is in single figures, then the market is very, very complacent. It's expecting higher prices. And you know, the, the, the longer it stays there, the more unstable the market is because it is going to, it is likely to reverse. And what I have here, this is the 10 year yield, just holding above the, uh, by 4%, but the two year, as I said, is it's 4.5. What else have I got? I've got the 20 year, uh, the, this is the treasury bond as yields come down, uh, bond prices go up. This is the Bill Ackman trade. And this is a nice example of accumulation where we've had a big fall in the bond price. Uh, as uh, as the yields have gone up, and this is what you're looking for. This is what you're looking for compressed candles. You're looking for stopping volume on the way down, and you're looking for the candles to uh, to compress and the volume uh, to rise. And in fact, it is going, but it's going to hit this this resistance here at 98 uh, 98.94. Uh, the TLT is not just the 20; it's the um, it's an amalgam of, um, of 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 the longer dated bonds, right? I'm just going to pass over to David so he can have a look at what the it seems to have livened up a, a bit at the moment. Nvidia hasn't it? So there we are. Nvidia, one of my one of my favourites, as I said, because I, I just love the pattern that it's in at the moment, and it's it's going to be really interesting to see whether it plays out. As I said, it could be in the next month, it could be at the beginning of next year, but play out it certainly will. We just have to be patient. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I'm just uh, looking on a couple of questions. Uh, going right the way back to Nathaniel. I'll do that now for you just to show you how to put volume on. I've got uh, this is the quantum volume indicator, but I'll show you how to put the standard one on as well. And what was the first indicator you showed? VPOC. Uh, what was the second one you showed? Oh, that was the the accumulation distribution indicator. So the in fact, I think it was the other way around. But those two indicators, I'll go back to that workspace. The top one was the accumulation distribution where the lines thicken according to the strength. And the one below it was the volume point of control with the volume histogram on the right hand side. And the VPOT was the purple dash line. So hopefully that, that answers those questions for you. I'll just show you how to put the volume on here. Uh, it's very straightforward. Just click on indicators. Um, my scripts that's that's our scripts obviously but if you want to find volume just click on that and you scroll all the way down and there we are you'll find volume uh that's the vanilla volume and they've got some others down here as well um very straightforward you just click it on the chart and and it'll appear on whatever chart you're using so that's how to do that um i've just got uh, nvidia here on a whole raft of time frames i've got it on trading view you can see i've got one three five across the top 10 15 and 20. And really just reinforces the fact that whatever we're doing, whether we're looking at indicators, whether we're looking at VPA, whatever it is, we always use multiple time frames. I tend to use a number, five or six, something like this generally. Uh, three is the absolute bare minimum because that gives you a, it's like the three, three lanes of a highway. Your trading window, if you like, is the center lane, and then you've got your slower speed on one side and you're faster on the other side. So you're faster is coming up through into your trading window and then passes across to your slower time frame, if you like. It's the ripples in the pond analogy, which I've used many, many times. So it just, if uh, all trends, if you think about it, all trends start in in the fastest time frame possible. They might start in a in a one second chart or a five second chart, but if they develop and grow, then ultimately they're going to move their way right the way through to the slowest time frame of all. But that's where it all starts. It is the breeding ground. That's where trends begin they begin in a fast time frame whatever that fast time frame in inverted commas may be relative to you for a slower swing or trend trader a faster time frame might be a 30 minute or an hour to an intraday scalping trader fast time frame might be a 15 second or a 30 second or a one minute 
it's all relative. So time is relative to to what it is you are focused on doing with that particular trading opportunity. And they're, they're all different. You can be a scalping trader in one scenario and a longer term trader in another. We have positions on all sorts of stuff. We have stuff going on that goes goes on for months. So we're really not interested in what this stock is doing right now, second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour. It's not really relevant to to what we're doing on that particular instrument or market. So it's you're just focused on what it is you're trying to do, and you can do you can be different things. You don't have to bracket yourself as one type of trader or one type of investor all i would say is that if you do separate yourself in that way then really you do have to separate the accounts in some way your trading accounts because you can't really mix because you will confuse yourself as to what it is you're trying to do and you will get confused as to what that was is this a trade is this a scalp is this a longer term what is it and so on and so forth so you have to you have to manage your accounts in that way. So you certainly need more than one if you're going to do different things in different markets or indeed in the same market. You've had a bit of a rally here, which has been quite interesting. I, we had a really nice waterfall, really nice price waterfall. I was talking about it earlier on, and it was carrying on down. The confirmations was there, were there, you know, these widespread candles, good volume under them, so on and so forth. Very simple, very straightforward, VPA 101. And then we get to a nice two-bar reversal here which would have certainly uh, raised uh, a signal at the very least as to a potential reversal. We see it mirrored over here. We've got a nice hammer candle here with decent volume under it, and we start to, to go up. The question is, of course, is this a – the question you've got to ask is, is this a primary reversal? In other words, are we now moving from – a bearish picture intraday to a bullish picture intraday. In other words, from what Wyckoff would describe as a primary trend lower to a primary trend higher. Or are we looking at a secondary trend? In other words, a reversal, a pullback, a pause point. And it's the pause points that cause us all the trouble because if we're sitting in this nice trend and we've been banking our money and adding it up and it's been going up nicely and then suddenly we start to see this happening. First of all, we see the two bar reversal. We see the hammer over here and we think, ah, um, and then you start to panic because the market starts to rally and it starts to rise. And by the time it gets to here, you probably are panicking. But what you see here is you see high volume and you see a narrow spread candle. And what really that's telling you is that this is not really going to develop much further because this is an anomaly. This is effort not matching result because we have much higher volume than here. And if you look at that candle there where my cursor is and the volume under it, if you take that as your benchmark in inverted commas, if you like, and always remember you've got to compare within a session. You can't compare one session with another or from uh, a session in New York with what's going on in London. So you have to compare candles within the session. But if you take that as your benchmark, and there's no reason to say why not, we're sort of two hours to go till the end of the session. So fine, we're kind of mid-session at the moment, mid to, mid to the second, back, back third, I suppose. If that's our benchmark, then why is it that we have not quite double the volume, but we certainly got one and a half times that volume here. And yet the spread on that candle is much narrower than the spread on this candle. So what that's telling you at that point is that there's an awful lot of effort going in there, but the price really isn't going very far. If that were genuine and this were this uh, relationship, this very simple one on one relationship were in agreement, then if we use that as our benchmark, then by all things being equal, this candle should have closed up here somewhere for, I don't know, 460, 77, let's say, somewhere up there. And it hasn't. Why hasn't it? It's because the market makers are struggling to sell into weakness, and therefore they are having to force their stock onto the market, onto a market that is not particularly receptive to higher prices, and there are lots of analogies one can use, but um, it's like the 
the the one I've used many many times. I think the fact I think is in the book as well is is if you imagine driving a you're on it, it's winter you're on a on a mountainside you've got a you're in a car and you're trying to drive up the mountain slope and at the bottom the incline is fairly gradual there's the road is icy and you're able to get some momentum but then as that gradient increases and steepens you're applying ever more pressure to the accelerator until you get to a point where your foot's flat on the floor basically and you're trying to go uphill and the wheels are just spinning so you're applying an awful lot of pressure, but you're not going forwards at all. And that's what, in effect, is happening there. You've got lots of volume going in, but you really haven't got it going far. Now, here you've got the opposite occurred. You've got lots of volume coming in. So we've had selling coming in this little reversal here. We've got widening spreads, which is what we always want to see. And we've got rising volume, nice, neat steps in rising volume, which is great. But then we get this fourth candle in that rally, which is, is anomalous again. Why is it anomalous? Well, if it were genuine, the spread of that candle, if that were, if this were all selling, the spread of that candle should be down here somewhere. Because if that's genuine, that relationship between the spread of that candle and this volume is our, again, now our benchmark, if you like, then why is it that we've got even more volume going in, but the spread of the candle is narrow? So what do we expect to happen in this next candle or this next sequence of candles? At the very least, I would suggest the this stock is going to go sideways. It might try and rally a little bit. We'll have to look at uh, what the volume profiles are doing as the candles develop. But in essence, we are seeing some buying coming in under this candle here. So what VPA does for you is it gives you the information so that you don't panic because what you are now doing is rather than panicking, your brain is in a logical, it's, it's gone to a, a state where we are using logic to arrive at a, at a common sense decision rather than being emotionally kicked into one by the market and the price action. And that is primarily the power of VPA. That is what it does. It moves your brain from one of, of a panic mode where you make emotional decisions to one where you make unemotional decisions purely based on logic, common sense, what you're seeing in multiple time frames. It's as simple as that. So when you see a little bit of buying coming in, you're not panicked. When you see a little bit of selling coming in, you're not panicked. It's what you expect to see. You're not surprised by it. And you just sit there, you read the other charts, you're looking at the other time frames. What are they telling me? And it all comes back to this whole business of time frames again, because if you move up to the 20 minute here, the, the trader who is on the 20 minute time frame um, may well be looking at this dispassionately and really not that bothered because he or she is looking at this over a much longer perspective. So these little pullbacks and reversals and rallies and everything else that goes on intraday, down here is really of no consequence. What they might be looking at here is certainly in terms of the, the progression here of the fall, we're seeing that selling pressure diminish gradually here. It's not falling away. It's not falling off a cliff but it's certainly diminishing those bars down there. So it looks as though this, this uh, nice trend that maybe they've been sitting in for a few hours, potentially is coming to an end. We see a little bit of buying coming under this candle. This last candle here was, a, was a, an attempt to rally, had a wick to the upper side, really couldn't raise itself off the floor. But you know maybe there's another little doji candle forming here, and, and maybe we're going to see this sort of peter out into the end of the session in the last sort of hour, hour and a half. Who knows? So it's all about context. It's all about time frames, and it's, it's really framing everything in the context of what it is you're trying to do. Um, so that's, that's across the various time frames on NVIDIA. Let's just drop that out of the way and move back on to uh, NinjaTrader. This is what's going on on the indices. These are the four indices, the YM, the Russell, the, the ES in the middle, and the NQ over to the right, doing pretty much the same thing. And part of the reason for those, that sort of rally mm. in NVIDIA is to do with um, the, the fact that we've had this reversal here. So again, you've got, to, you've got to keep an eye on what is going on. You'll be looking at all sorts of things. If you're intraday trading on stocks, you'll be looking at the VIX. You'll be looking at, let's just hop over onto the uh, VPA workspace, there we are, VWAP 
workspace. This is the VWAP, and I'm not going to go through it now, but it is basically five indicators in one. I mentioned it last week, um, and I said I like to use the the moving version. If I click on it very quickly, there are five variants we've built into the indicator. Uh, where are we? There we go. We've got the VWAP, the MVWAP, the AVWAP, the TWAP, and the Interday VWAP. The VWAP starts from the start of the session. And personally, I like to have I like to have the MVWAP. And what I this is the MVWAP we're looking at here. And the difference is, excuse me, I've got something stuck to my lip. With the MVWAP, it moves through the session crossover. So you get a very clear idea as you move into the session and prior, just post it. When you're looking at the VWAP, it can get quite confusing around the sort of pre-market and the open and all the rest of it. Moving the MVWAP, you get this seamless move through there. This is the VWAP itself, the center line. And then we have the outer envelopes, our upper envelope and our lower envelope, which are our one standard deviation. And I and I described this last week where you see, first of all, the, the VWAP itself is pressing down. So this is really applying pressure to the stock. And in addition to that, what you see a great deal is you see, pre you see price uh, approaching these levels, testing, and then falling away. You can see it all the time here, testing, testing, falling away, back to test again, falling away. So we've got real downwards pressure here for the stock. Mm -hmm. The price action is below the uh, the midpoint, which is here. This is what you can consider to be fair value, very much like uh, the um, uh, the the v, the VPOC in that we're looking at is is the stock overpriced or underpriced because that's really what it comes down to. So the midpoint here, the VWAP itself is is often considered as the fair value price of whatever it is. Uh, you have you are trading in terms of a stock index, whatever it is. So it's a key indicator for particularly for stock traders. But we we've extended it out on the intraday one. We can go right the way out to the slower time frames as well, right the way out to the dailies, the weeklies, and the monthlies. So it's a, it's a powerful indicator, which gives you all that information about the extent to which a stock is um, overvalued or undervalued and its distance from the volume point of control. But the key thing is, it's not just an indicator in isolation. We then use it with all our other indicators as well. And particularly, obviously, the whole thing is underpinned by volume price analysis. And if you look at these examples here, where you've got high volume here, you can see under my on, my, on the edge of my cursor here, on my edge of my pointer, narrow spread, high volume doesn't really go very far. Why? Because the volume is falling away. We get more buying coming in here. And then we get a nice two bar reversal here. Nice volume under that one. And then up we go. But as we go up, notice how the spreads are narrowing. So it's really not indicative of a strong move. The volume is falling away. And then as we get that little reversal there, we get a nice uh, increase in the volume that we saw on uh, trading view as well. And then we get our little anomaly candle here. Good volume under there, narrow spread candle. So we know we've got some buying coming in here. We've got lots of volume under here. Market really didn't go anywhere. So it's struggling. It's weak. Uh, that's really all that tells you is the market, the price has tried to rally. The market makers are forcing stock back into the market that they've had to acquire in this, this reversal. So they're buying here, they're supporting, they're in, and now they're dumping again. They're selling back into weakness, but they are selling into a weak market. They're not selling into a strong market. So this just looks like a weak rally and confirmed also by the fact you've got volume falling away, narrow spread candle. It's no surprise to see potentially this pick up, pick up the bearish momentum once again. And again, note how we've just tested back into that outer envelope on the VWAP. So we've run way over time. So I think I'm going to wrap up at that point. Um, let me just show you where all the bits and pieces are. You can find all the indicators over at quantumtrading.com for all the various platforms, um, MT45, NinjaTrader 78, TradingView, and TradeStation. The, those indicators I showed you, they are available currently for NinjaTrader and TradeStation. That's the, um, the, the new VWAP indicator, the market strength indicator, the volume relative strength indicator I covered last week. So, But that's in there as well. 
and it's also available on TradingView and we will make them available for TradeStation and MT45 in due course. It's a huge amount of work, but it's something we always do. And on NinjaTrader also, we've now developed the market analyzer. So if you have the NinjaTrader tools, uh, you will be able to use them in market analyzer as well if that's something that you wish to do. Uh, that's the Forex program, and this is where you'll find the stock program in due course. We're just making some, um, we're updating the funded program. We're bolting in some more levels at the evaluation stage. So there'll be, uh, it'll go from $1,000, right? They're up to $20,000 as a starting point. So it's really exciting. And we've also simplified it. We've simplified the rules. We've added a bunch of other markets. So you can trade not only Forex, uh, you can trade uh, indices in there around the world. Uh, cryptocurrencies and uh, all the uh, forex pairs obviously and a bunch of commodities as well finally over to anna's site anacooling.com this is where you'll find all her analysis all the books as well and speaking of the books i just pulled this up as well um, it is very humbling i was reading uh, one or two of the reviews over on the stock uh, trading invest this one on um, some of the examples books there it's very humbling to read what people write and the reviews they give, which are very much appreciated. And and the VPOC, the uh, the VPA book there is a number one bestseller on uh, on the forex world as well. So it's um, as I say, it is very humbling um, when you read some of these comments and how it has helped, how volume has helped uh, traders who they were looking for something but didn't really know what they were looking for, and then they find that this is the missing piece of the puzzle. We were very privileged, and I and we've always said that. 20, 25 years ago, when we first stumbled across um, this this methodology in a in a newspaper article that was down on the floor for um, to keep the floor dry from the dogs, I think, and their dog bowls. Um, and Anna picked it up, and and that's where it all started. But it was a long, long time ago. Uh, we were very fortunate. We started with volume, and we just embraced it from day one. To us, it just made sense. Uh, for a lot of traders, that's not the case. They they have to find their way a painful journey to it um, but i hope that um, you in finding us will will also find it helpful in your own trading and the beauty of it is you don't have to trade your you don't have to change what it is you're doing if you're using bollinger bands if you're happily using moving averages if you're using fibonacci whatever it is fine bolt vpa underneath it it's as simple as that so i hope you've enjoyed today thanks very much indeed for coming along today and we will be back next week, I think. Yeah, we're getting fairly close to Christmas. But I think we'll be back next week. We've certainly got one tomorrow, by the way, which is on Forex at this time as well. Um, so we will see you then. If not, enjoy the rest of the trading week. And uh, thanks again. Bye for now.